Hello, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today is our News Watch unit. It's also our all English lecture, so we're going to be trying to speak to you totally in English today.、Mm. We might sneak a word or two in of another language in there <laughs> without really knowing it, because of course English has lots of borrowed words from other languages. But、uh, we've got a couple of news stories today. One is about robots that can clean your teeth. Wouldn't that be nice? You wouldn't have to brush your teeth anymore. And we've also got this. Like、uh, that, yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. And <laughs> flossing, I would like to、uh, not have to do that、yeah. either. And then in Africa, we've got、uh, some fella、uh, bringing、uh, computers to kids in Mozambique,、uh, trying to bring the digital world to Mozambique. So that's what the、uh, two stories are about today. It is ultimately both stories are about high tech. Although this guy in Mozambique. He's using sort of low tech transportation with the computers on that particular cart. We'll talk about that. He's a good guy. First, though, we're going to read through our two news stories first, and then we'll go back talk about some of these words and、uh, phrases that you might see on a test in the future. Researchers design teeth cleaning robots. Researchers working at the University of Pennsylvania have devised tiny robots that might one day help clean our teeth. These robots are actually microbots, meaning they're too small to be seen with the naked eye. The idea is to make them a painless tool for a dentist to use. The bacteria that live in our mouths are experts at surviving in hard-to-reach places. They cling to our teeth and cover themselves with a thin film that's hard to remove. That's why dentists often have to scrape away at our teeth, a sometimes painful process. The microbots are made of iron oxide particles and cause the production of a natural chemical that breaks down the film and kills the bacteria. Since they contain iron, dentists can control and direct them with magnets. Iron oxide doesn't harm the body. So there are no health concerns in that regard. Although this idea sounds great, it still needs lots of work. The researchers are still years away from developing a version of these microbots that can be used in clinical trials. Giant traveling computer brings the digital world to Mozambique. Tablet computers like iPads are supposed to be small and portable. The one belonging to Dane Ahmad, though, is the size of a cart, and that's exactly how he carries it around. Ahmad's computer consists of multiple tablets that he puts on the back of a cart pulled by a donkey. He tours the rural areas of Mozambique, a country in Southeast Africa. His purpose is to bring the digital world to those without access to it. And in doing so, he provides an important educational resource. The computer, known as the community tablet, shows up in villages, playing music to attract people's attention. When we arrive in a community, we try and make it a party, Ahmad says. He then plays educational films before letting people use the screens to answer questions about what they've seen. Topics include everything from basic education to hygiene, voting, and mobile banking. Ahmad now has a patent for the community tablet, and hopes the idea will spread to other regions of Africa. The time has come for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson, so let's get to it. It's our news watch unit for the month of October. The first story is all about teeth cleaning robots.、Mm. So these researchers have designed robots that can clean your teeth. So teeth cleaning robots, robots that clean your teeth. So we're going to the University of Pennsylvania. Researchers working at the University of Pennsylvania have devised tiny robots. 
that might one day help clean our teeth. Okay, this sounds a little bit like nanotechnology to me. Yeah. When you got little robots that are really tiny doing various things, so they have devised or they have designed and built these robots that may someday help clean our teeth. Of course, this is kind of in the research phase, and so you're probably not going to see this、uh, for sale at your local pharmacy for many decades. So yeah, sorry, you're going to still have to brush your teeth the hard way. I don't think it will be decades, which is.、Uh... Uh, you know, ten years each decade. It probably will be faster. I know they've already started putting nanobots inside people's bodies to、uh, do different things like scan. So it's kind of like a mini、uh, camera inside you. I wanted to mention there is a verb in this first sentence actually that it might look like we would say device, devised, but it's one of those vowels that we actually say this s sound with a z, device. Which means you're planning something, you're inventing something, but it's usually pretty complex. It's not a simple system, and、uh, like Tom said, it's still going to take some work before real people like you and me have access to these little tiny, tiny robots. Uh, that they put in our mouths, which is kind of, kind of creepy a little bit.、Uh, but as this stuff becomes more commonplace, it will be less and less creepy, Too, and、yeah. it will be more commonplace.、Mm. Uh, like right now, everyone would be probably very afraid to get in an autonomous car, but、uh, you know, someday we'll probably hop in them without a second thought. But in any case, let's talk more about these microbots.、Okay. These robots are actually microbots,、mm. which means they're too small to be seen with the naked. Eye, my goodness, they're that、yeah. small. You'd actually need a magnifying glass or a microscope to see them.、Mm. That's what microbot means here, and the idea is to make them a painless tool for dentists to use.、Mm -hmm. I guess not for us, but for dentists. Of course, a dentist is someone who treats your teeth. And for those of you who don't like the shape of your teeth, you might have gone to a special kind of dentist called an orthodontist, and he puts braces on your teeth. I've seen people with braces here; it's getting to be quite popular. I had braces when I was young. It's not fun, but it does straighten out your teeth a little bit. This is just a plain dentist. He doesn't put braces on your teeth. I know when you go and have a dental checkup. You know they start with their little tools and they're scraping what we call plaque off our teeth, and you feel like your teeth are clean, of course, because you tried to brush them really well and floss. And I've still had plaque on my teeth,、um, so I actually got a little machine called the water pick. I use one of those, which squirts. Highly intense water into your mouth that helps a little. So plaque, P L A Q U E, is that stuff they're scraping off. Well, in the second paragraph, it says the bacteria that live in our mouths, and we have a lot of bacteria in our mouths. Some good, some bad. We have both types in our bodies.、Uh, they're experts. At surviving in hard-to-reach places, sometimes your your toothbrush just can't get somewhere, or you're flossing with that floss that kind of looks like a string you can put in your mouth, and you just can't reach every single place in your mouth. Well, the bacteria they're pretty happy about that because they can survive if you don't reach them and try to get rid of them. So to survive just means you're continuing to live or exist, especially if someone's trying to. Kill you or get rid of you.、Uh, sometimes, as a joke, we'll say, "Wow, I survived work today. It was horrible." So, of course, no one was trying to kill you at work, unless you were a spy, perhaps. But most of us just work in an office, and you have a hard day. You can actually joke about that and say, "Wow, yeah, my boss tried to kill me today, but I survived." Or if it was a real disaster like an earthquake,、oh. wow, you survived the、uh, earthquake there. Yeah,、uh, that was an intense earthquake. Good for you. But in any case, your bacteria, of course, are good at surviving in places that are hard to reach. No matter how much we brush or floss、mm. our teeth, the bacteria manage to get in those little nooks and crannies of our teeth, and they cling to our teeth and cover themselves with a thin film that's hard to remove. So to cling just means to stick to something.、Uh, cling sometimes. 
sometimes your clothes might cling to each other if you put them in the dryer.、Uh, they cling because of static electricity. But in this particular case, they attach themselves to your teeth, and then, in order to prevent them from getting washed away, they cover themselves.、Mm-hmm. With a thin film. This is not film from your camera. <laughs> It's、uh, some kind of、uh, liquid that's kind of sticky. I Tiny guess. Tiny layer of something. A、right? layer of,、yeah. uh, of a hard liquid, basically,、mm. and it's hard to remove that. Layer of film, so、mm-hmm. that's why it's so hard to get rid of bacteria in your mouth. I wanted to also mention. We'll use "cling" as a verb to talk about small kids. If they're afraid and they're meeting strangers for the first time, they will. Cling to their mom or their dad because they're afraid of someone、uh, that they don't know. You can cling by holding on tight to something. If I'm in a foreign country where I know there are a lot of pickpockets, people who try to quickly steal a wallet or your purse, I will cling to my purse. So yeah, you know, you'll want to cling to things that you care about. Well, that's what they do. That's why dentists often have to scrape away at our teeth. I talked about how they. Take that little tool and then they rub it back and forth on the surface of your tooth. That's them trying to scrape something off. Kind of describing that sound, scrape, right? Scraping the stuff away. True. That's on your teeth. If you live where it snows, you might have to get up in the morning and scrape the ice off your car before you try to drive away. Yeah, off of your windshield, of course. Otherwise, you won't be able to see. True. So yeah, they try to scrape the bacteria off of your teeth, which can be painful when you get your teeth cleaned. Maybe you're supposed to do that once or twice a year or something、mm-hmm. like that. Yeah.、Uh, yeah, it's kind of an interesting problem. I wouldn't call it painful, but it is kind of weird. Sometimes they hit your gums, though. That it、hurts. can be. They've got some、uh, like drills or something. But in any case, the microbots are made of iron oxide particles、mm-hmm. and cause the production of a natural chemical that breaks down the film and kills the bacteria. So we've got a couple of verb phrases here: to be made up of something.、Mm-hmm. You could say to be made from.、Uh, that's the same meaning.、Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, the microbots are made from iron oxide particles. Particles, in other words, they use little pieces of iron oxide to make these micro robots. Yeah, if you're, you're talking about particles, they're tiny, tiny little things、uh, that we probably have a hard time seeing with our eyes. I know sometimes when there's a lot of air pollution, they'll talk about how if you have bad lungs or it's hard for you to breathe, you want to be careful with the particles in the air. Breakdown we often use to talk about a car that stops working; it'll break down, and you'll have to, you know, leave it by the side of the road. Or if someone's very emotional when they've just had some bad news, they might break down and start sobbing, crying uncontrollably, or、uh, maybe someone. Mental health、uh, fails them, and they have a breakdown. That is a noun, and you put those two words together. He had a mental breakdown, meaning he just couldn't face life and needed some professional help. This causes the production of a natural chemical that breaks down the film. What we're talking about is are these microbots, and so the iron oxide actually helps break down that extra layer of film on your teeth and. Kills the bacteria. That's what uh, those uh, microbots are、mm-hmm. designed to do. And since they contain iron, or because they contain iron, dentists can control and direct them with magnets.、Huh. Remember, magnets attract iron, and so of course you can control their direction that way. And iron oxide doesn't harm the body. I guess we probably already have lots of minerals inside our bodies、I、anyway. I hope it doesn't. Yeah. So there are no health concerns in that regard. In that regard means in that respect. If you're talking about that, yeah. Although this idea sounds great, it still needs lots of work. I noticed when you were reading, Tom,、mm-hmm. we have lots of work.、Uh, what's the difference pe- between lots of work and a lot of work? There's no difference. Use either one; it's fine. Mix it up. Don't always use the same phrases, and your writing will improve that way. So the researchers, these are the people actually、uh, who have devised these micro robots. They're still busy at work. They're developing、um, a different version or other versions.
versions of these microbots, and they could be used in clinical trials. Clinical trial is when either a, a medicine, a new pharmaceutical medicine that you'd have to get through a doctor, is being researched to see if it will actually cure some disease or or be a good treatment. They test it out on animals, then on people, and it takes several years for it to then be rolled out. Into the marketplace where people like you and me can buy these things, they're still years away, as Tom said. As we're getting faster and faster at these technological changes, I expect it to be pretty quick. It will turn around, and we have these microbots ready to help us with our. Teeth and our bacteria in our teeth, but that does not excuse you from the responsibility of brushing your teeth at least twice a day and flossing as well.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, you can't expect these to replace brushing or flossing at any time. Okay, let's、uh, move on now to the next、uh, article. But before we do that, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Welcome back, guys. It's time to start our second news story. The headline, and that's what we call a title of a news story, either、uh, in a newspaper, it could be on a website. A lot of、uh, former magazines are now stopping publishing. You know, they don't use the real paper anymore, and they're just having a digital version. Well, this particular story is pretty awesome. We've got some nice people out there in the world who are trying to make the world better. So the headline is "Giant Traveling Computer Brings a Digital World to Mozambique." With our headlines, we very rarely have a lot of articles, like definite articles and indefinite articles. Definite articles would be the. Uh, and an indefinite would be ah、uh, or an. Be careful, guys. I know a lot of、uh, the people I work with in Taiwan, not here at, at English for You, but a lot of people who are trying to improve their English, they don't know which one to use, so they all pick the.、Mm. But remember, the is specific. Ah、uh, is more general, so start with general, and then you go specific. Um, okay, so we've got a traveling computer, and it's giant. It's huge, and what happens is this giant computer is traveling around the country, and for the the citizens there, they're able to actually get their hands on the digital world. And this is a country where most of the citizens don't have access to the internet. Or computers, and this is going on in the African country of Mozambique, which、mm. is in Southeast Africa.、Uh, across the ocean from Mozambique is Madagascar, the island there that we all know and love. So here in this country, we've got、uh, a guy there by the name of Dane. A mod, which、hmm. we'll get to in a second. So here it begins by saying, "Tablet computers like iPads are supposed to be small and portable.、Mm-hmm. Portable means you can carry it around.、Uh, your TV at home is probably not portable, but、uh, my sister-in-law used to have a portable DVD player that she would take with her on flights to the USA.、Uh-huh. That was、uh, many years ago. Of course, now everybody takes their smartphones and their iPads or whatever, or they can watch the movies, you know, that are on the plane, but." But back in the day, people had portable DVD players or portable radios. True, just things that you could carry around with you. Yeah, it's changed very quickly. Portable,、uh, typically with these sorts of devices, also means it's running on a battery. If you have to plug it into a wall, it's not very portable. So a lot of things that we use, you can choose. Maybe of a plug, like my laptop, I can plug it into the wall, but I can also just use its battery if it's charged up. So the one belonging to our Great fellow citizen, this guy's great. Dane Ahmad is the size of a cart. When we say cart,、uh, take a look at the photo. If you haven't heard of this guy before, I I hadn't heard of him before, so I looked him up. His cart kind of looks like a wagon, and there's no canvas that.、Uh, Covers the top, so it's all open. He sits on the front,、uh, kind of driving or guiding the donkey 
that's uh, actually pulling him、uh, instead of a horse. He has a donkey. Bless that donkey.、Um, but the cart has a series of small tablet computers that are set up. But I think they're all running the same message. It's hard to describe. You got to take a look at it. Right, so Ahmad's computer consists of multiple tablets that he puts on the back of a cart pulled by a donkey.、Yeah. Hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> There you go. So yeah, consist of here is a verb phrase that just means it has these things.、Mm-hmm. Uh, these things are all together to make up this this cart computer. So it consists of it has many tablet computers. And of course, it's on the back of a cart, and then the cart is pulled by a donkey. I guess donkeys can pull heavy loads pretty easily, even though they are supposed to be quite stubborn. They're not the nicest animal, I have to say.、Uh, my sister has a donkey.、Uh, they are stubborn. That's why、uh, people actually call stubborn people a donkey. Tom, I wanted to mention、mm-hmm. consist of is very similar to. Uh, to be made of or to be made from, but consist of. I also have that idea that it's separate things someone's pulled together. You know what I mean?、Mm-hmm. Um, so it does have multiple tablets. It's not one, and it's not just one big one. They're actually the size of an iPad. And he's got them、uh, put into this thing he's built in the back of his cart, and、uh, multiple kids can be in front of these screens, and you can see they're really excited to be pushing on、uh, the screen and getting it to, you know, show different pictures. He tours, which means he travels around his country. He tours the rural areas. If it's rural, guys, it's out in the country, out in the countryside. There aren't a lot of.、Uh, Stores and malls and big department stores like we have here. So he's out in the rural areas of Mozambique, where most of the people don't have access to the internet. And as Tom said, Mozambique is a country in South East Africa. That's where this is located. That's where this good guy is doing his work. Yep, they're in country areas or rural areas,、yeah. and his purpose is to bring the digital world to those without access to it. And in doing so, he provides an important educational resource. So that's his purpose here: to bring、mm-hmm. the digital world to people who don't have access to it, or to people who can't use it. And by doing this, or in doing so, as a result of this, he provides an important educational resource. Resource here、uh, just refers to something that provides something for someone else. A、mm-hmm. resource in this particular case: resource of information, a place where you can. Get this stuff. You could talk about a country's natural resources. Like Taiwan does not have a lot of natural resources, so you have to import a lot of things like oil and coal and stuff like. I don't know. Does Taiwan import coal? I'm not sure, but I don't know. Indeed,、uh, oil is imported. That is a natural resource.、Uh, minerals, you know, stuff like that could also be considered a natural resource. You can also use resource to talk about your money. You know, I, I don't have any financial resources at the moment. Maybe someone wants to. Uh, get you to loan them some money,、uh, but you don't have any resources currently. Educational resources are usually our books, our schools, the different ways we use to actually educate people, not just the children but adults as well. So this computer, and we're、uh, calling all of the tablet computers working. As one is just the computer,、uh, but there are several tablets. Just so you understand,、uh, it's actually got a name. People call it the community tablet. Your community just is the area that you live in, the people that live there with you, your neighborhood. I love my community. I live in the district of Daan, and I just love the area. There are trees. The people are nice. The food is good.、Uh, my community. So it's a community tablet. And I bet the folks in rural areas get quite excited when they hear this community tablet, and it's its name. So we're capitalizing community and tablet.、Uh, that this fun thing is coming to their village. If you live in a village. You can assume you're in the country.、Uh, there aren't a lot of stores, malls, different things that you can find easily in the city and villages. It's definitely a slower-paced life. People are growing things typically.、Uh, you probably have a couple of stores, but they aren't big, big malls. So, 
What it does to let people know it's coming is it plays music. I first thought of the garbage trucks here in Taiwan. The garbage trucks play that play a different couple songs to let you guys know. Ooh, it's garbage truck time! Get out here with your trash. Or as we do in America, our ice cream trucks play music, and we all get excited about that because who doesn't love ice cream? Yeah, when I first came to Taiwan, of course, there were these vans that would drive around and start playing music.、Uh-huh. Uh, they would have, they would be selling bakery items. Oh, really? I think one was called Xiang Hao Jia or something like that.、Mm. That, 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 that. Oh, there's the、uh, the bakery van.、Uh-huh. Let's go down and buy some pastries、nice. there. I don't think they do that anymore. At least I haven't seen that in many years. But you're all familiar with this uh, technique here uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, to bring this to people's attention. They play music, and、uh, here's what、uh, Dane. Ahmad himself says,、mm. "When we arrive in a community, we try to make it a party, or we try and make it a party. In other words, he's trying to make it a fun thing. He wants to attract people's attention, probably especially the kids. He wants the、yeah. kids to come over there and understand that hey, you can learn something if you come down here and check this out." I think it's a great idea. What he does is he plays educational films, not films that you'd see in the theater. Of course, those are just for entertainment purposes. Educational films try to teach you something. When I was in junior high and elementary school, in particular, we would be、uh, seeing educational films about how to be, you know, clean, you know, how to have good hygiene, things like that.、Um, and some of the kids going to school. Don't hear those things at home. So educational films, especially in small villages, can be very, very good for the people there. So they he he first he plays the educational films before he lets the kids or the people touch the screens, use the screens, and what he has on the screens are questions that if they've been paying attention to the films, they'll know the answer to. So it's not just playing video games for fun. He's actually trying to teach them and educate them. Uh, right, so he probably doesn't really let them play video games,、no. which I'm sure a lot of kids want to do. Oh,、well, maybe at the end, who knows?、Uh, could be. Sometimes you do have to let kids have fun in order to get them to come back、yeah. for seconds、True. later on. But、uh, topics include everything from basic education to hygiene, voting, and mobile banking. Hygiene, of course, just refers to being clean and killing germs and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. Wash your hands before and after every meal and vote. Voting, you know how to select your leaders, and also mobile banking. In other words, how to do your banking when you're on the road. How to maybe access an ATM.、Uh, you know how to enter your PIN number, your PIN basically, and then、uh, you know how to get a loan and stuff like that. How to start a business, etc., etc. That's also helpful. So Ahmad now has a patent for the community tablet that he devised, that he came up with. It's his invention. A patent is、uh, when you go to the government and you tell them you've invented something or written something, produced something, and you want to protect it so that when people try to copy your idea, they can't. You can actually sue them and get money from them. If you have a great idea, you definitely Definitely want to get a patent for it, and that happens through your government wherever you live, whatever country you live in. So he wants to、uh, get his patent, and he has one now for what he calls the community tablet. And he hopes the idea will spread to other regions of Africa. Remember, he's in South. East Africa, but there are many other countries that could really benefit from his idea. It's a huge continent for sure. We wish him the best of luck. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Remember, those two stories were about、uh, microbots to clean the、uh, plaque out of your teeth, off your teeth, and we have the giant traveling computer、mm-hmm. in Mozambique thanks to Dane Ahmad. So thanks for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. See ya.